everyone. Hi guys. Today we're going to talk about our tattoos. I'm excited about this. Yeah, me too. A lot of people have asked and I think pretty much all of our tattoos have some sort of big meaning to us. Yeah, so. most of them. Most of mine. Yeah, I said almost all. <laughs> I have quite a few more than she does, so. Just a couple. <clears throat> just a couple. Let's just start with that. So how many tattoos do you have? I have seven. How many do you have? Two. <laughs> I started getting tattoos when I was 18. Like, as soon as I turned 18, I went to the tattoo place and got my first tattoo. But, to start, I'm going to start talking about my most recent tattoos and going back to my oldest tattoos. There is a big difference in quality of my newer tattoos versus my older tattoos. When I was younger, I didn't really know or maybe I didn't care about who, who did them. I wanted them to look nice, but I didn't, I don't think I knew different people had different strengths with tattoos and there's a big difference between somebody that just started and somebody that's been doing it for a long time and all of that stuff. So that is my, yeah, that that is my kind of morning. Thing. If you're young with tattoos, do your research. Find somebody good. <laughs> my first one, I have them on my phone so I don't forget about any, because that happens often. Do you have a bajillion? Seven. <clears throat> my first one is on my right arm. It's a mandala. Well, it's part of a mandala. So I got this one at a time in my life. Things were just changing a lot and I was trying to find balance and I was trying to find my place and stuff like that. So a mandala means, it means circle and it represents that life is never ending like a circle. You know, the song that you learn when you're younger. The circle is round, it has no end, yada yada yada. Um, and that everything is connected. For me, it represented a lot of balance and harmony because a mandala is completely symmetrical but it's definitely my most recent and I have another tattoo by the same artist who I will probably always go back to if I ever get anymore she's amazing she's such a good artist she did one of hers as well mine aren't the same though mine are mine are more like writing style so it's not the same but like yeah. she is yeah. such an amazing artist she is so my next one you guys have seen in some videos and I've had some people comment it's on the left <laughs> upper arm and it's a bunch of roses with lace. It is probably one of my favorites. I get a lot of uh, compliments on it when I wear like tank tops and stuff in public. Mm -hmm. It's a solid 18 hours of work across two, two days. Sittings. Yeah, two sittings, two days. That was really rough. She was pretty lie. much by herself. I was actually out of town. Yep. Um, as she said, a lot of change was happening in our lives then. And I think a couple times she had friends there, like, in and out they for a little bit, me. but not really. Yeah. Um, but I would go to work, and then I'd go to the tattoo parlor and sit there for hours and hours and hours. And it was yeah. kind of miserable, but totally worth it. I really like this tattoo. I got it because I wanted to cover up some scarring that I had, and it did a really nice job of that. Taking something that I didn't like and I thought was ugly and turning it into something that I think is really pretty. It's gorgeous. It's such a gorgeous tattoo. Like, I think that's the first one where I looked at it and I said, like... Tattoos can be pretty. Just, like, beautiful. <laughs> like, it's so elegant. And, yeah, it's so pretty. And next wait, wait, I want to talk about that one for a little bit more. Okay. So she told you it was 18 hours that she sat for, right? So I think it was right before I came home, right? Yeah, it was. No, you came to visit me. I had never seen what happens to, like, a really intricate tattoo. Like how it heals? How it heals. And she had kind of told me on the phone, and I was just like, ow, ow, ow. The whole thing turns to an entire scab, so her whole arm was a... And this thing is big. <laughs> yeah. Her whole arm was scabbed, because it's all, like, shaded, all that. It was and to the point that, like, at night, it stuck to her t-shirt, and she had to unstick her t-shirt from and her arm. And it just bleed. And it was just, oh. And do you remember that one time? And it was good once I saw it. Like, it was so much better so once, much I, better. once I and saw it. And there was a one part in, like, in the middle of the roses that had a lot of shading in it, and then it just kept, like, scabbing and then coming off and then scabbing and then coming off. It took forever to heal. Yeah. The tattoo artist said that I must not be a very sweaty sleeper because my shirt kept sticking to me. Oh, uh, yeah. But do you remember that one time we were hiking, that, and I had just gotten it, like, touched up? And we came down from the hike, and there was just blood all over my shirt. Uh -huh. So I had yeah. broken open and started bleeding. Yeah. I remember that pretty well. But it was really sore. Smaller tattoos don't necessarily hurt a whole lot. When you sit in the chair for 9 or 10 hours at a time, it hurts. Like, there's no getting around it. I don't it think is painful. I couldn't do it. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to take that long. And neither did the neither tattoo did she, artists. Though. <laughs> but 
I like it. It's one of a kind. Yes, and she made yeah. She drew it for me. Yes. Nobody will ever have it again. No. <laughs> Although she does have it hanging on her wall, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm part of her gallery. No big deal. <laughs> Alright, you want to talk about one more before yeah. I go? Yeah, so the next one we can talk about together. Okay, awesome. Let's go. So, <clears throat> my the next one that we are going to talk about is we both have semicolon tattoos. If you guys have ever heard of Project Semicolon, let us know down in the comments. So, a semicolon is used um, when an author could have chosen to end a sentence but didn't. The sentence is your life and you are the author. It's really an affirmation against suicide, depression, Addiction, mental illness. For mine, I have a semicolon and then I have love life around it. And it was just a reminder. I was going through a really hard period of time in my life. I've mentioned in other videos I really struggled with depression and anxiety. For most um, of your life. Most of my life. It was just a reminder to me that I have that choice to try to keep going and to find that strength mm -hmm. and reason to. And then the reminder of like, love life, like life really is beautiful. Because in my head, a, a lot of times I was just thinking of everything was so negative and so bad. Yeah. But really, life is what you make of it. So make a life that you love and enjoy. Mm -hmm. No matter what you, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything I've been through or anything like that. No. Like, it has made me the person I am. For sure. But to say that there haven't been struggles that have really gotten to me mm -hmm. and stuck with me for my life is, yeah. they have. For sure. And I think you got that one when you were like really in the depths of, like you were a workaholic, you yeah. were, you know, doing things that weren't making you feel good. Mm -hmm. And I was working 60 hours a week. I, I saw you, but I literally, I, I would come home, shower, she would have dinner ready. I would eat, I would go to bed, I'd wake up, I'd be at work do it all over again. right in the morning, like yeah. sunrise in the morning and do the same thing over again. Day in and day out. And we know there's a lot of people that do that and they're totally fine with it and that's okay for them. But it wasn't right for her or for us. No, I couldn't I couldn't function function at the level of stress that I was that I had. And that's just like from that that's me personally. I, I don't work in that condition. A big part of my next tattoo <laughs> is actually how hard it has been to for me to find my place because I felt like I couldn't work and I wasn't enough for society and I couldn't make it. It's taken you a long time to realize that no matter what you do, what you have to offer, how much money you make, anything that you do, you're enough as you are, regardless of any outside forces. It does take me a really long time. A really long time. But I can definitely say in the last few years, I've come really far. Really and... far. <laughs> I don't mean that in a rude way. No, 100%. Saying, like, you are There's doing... There's a drastic difference. 100%. Yes. From where you are. Yes, like can't even believe, like even talking about this, I would have never imagined that I would be where I am and as happy as I am and just excited for life and yeah. I never would have imagined that. But I am, like I'm living love life like to its fullest right now. It makes me so happy. Well. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. It's good. They're happy tears. It's just, it was hard. It was It was hard for you too. It was very, it, very hard. I can't imagine being on your side of it. Of, I, I constantly didn't want to be here. Constantly. Yeah. It was rough for a long time. Thanks for always sticking by my side, though. Yeah. I need to come around. I need to find it. Mm -hmm. Guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My next one, I think, is Brittany's favorite tattoo of mine. My quote. Is, oh. So this one. Okay, we've got to let you guys, <laughs> should we let them read it first? Or should we let you talk first? I can, okay, we'll pop it up and I'll, I'll read it at the same time. Perfect. So it's a Please Ralph stop. Waldo Emerson quote. And it's, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. A hundred percent. This is what she lives by. This is what she has done. Sweet. So I always knew, like, growing up I wanted to do something where I was helping people. I didn't necessarily know what that would look like, but, like, I went to school for psychology, and I've had jobs in, like, child care, a lot of child care, um, <laughs> in various forms. Now I work with kids with autism, so I just knew, like, my success wasn't necessarily going to be measured on, like, how much money I can make, because working with kids, like, I'm not, 
I'm not going to be a millionaire, right? So I had, I, I found another way to kind of look at my success and to be able to call myself successful. It has nothing to do with your job. You've done it with your wife. I mean, my life wouldn't be where it was without you at all. Well, that's, I that have, works both ways. Yeah, but you have literally saved my life. And you know that. I can't. Mm. I wasn't expecting this to be emotional, guys. They are. I mean, they're, they're so deep. Like, the reality of, like, why we got these tattoos and... I have to tell a funny story, though. Are we going to talk about this tattoo and how yeah. mad I was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. So, it's really funny that... I'm over it now, and it's my favorite tattoo, but... <laughs> it's really funny, though, that it's your favorite, because I got this tattoo at a time where we were... We were hurting for money, like, for sure hurting for money. And I got money from family members for Christmas. And I was like, I'm not going to use this to pay bills. I'm not going to use this to buy groceries. I'm going to go get a tattoo. She was so, so mad at me. Rightfully so. Like, was my, priorities, my priorities were not, you know, in line. I was like, I've been paying <laughs> <laughs> for us to live. I was you get, giving you as get, much as I could. And you get some money. And now you're just going to go get a tattoo. And I, I was, oh, I was so mad. My, my, I mean, my thoughts were that, like, I got this extra money for Christmas to spend on me. And that's what I'm going to do. Your thoughts are totally valid. I mean. I, I don't know if they're valid. Well, I, now. I, mean, I don't regret it by any means. Yeah, I was pissed she at was, the time. She was mad. But looking back on it. Well, no, looking back on it, I was still pissed. But now. <laughs> Now, now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, and I love it, and it is my favorite tattoo, and it's my favorite tattoo because it is her. Like, to a T, it is Ashley. And I can't, I can't, like, that's, I, I don't even know how else to put any words to it. Like, it's just, it so perfectly describes you and how you live your life and what you've done. Thank you. And it also changes, like, my perspective on what success actually means. Yeah, for sure. Before, like we said, when I got my, the other tattoo of love life and semicolon, my idea of success was you just make money. Like, it's make all about money going and making money and as much as you can. And I, I missed life at that point. I wasn't living. I was surviving for what? I don't know. And paycheck. Yeah, for a paycheck. And for another paycheck. And I was miserable, and I was making her miserable. But that totally changed, like, that quote is, totally changes, like, the perception of what success is. And, and what, like, changed what my view of success is, too. Now. Now, yeah, at the time I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> it was, it was not, not happy for a few weeks there. But you got yeah, over it. I did, I did. It's okay. I love you, and I treasure you. And, and that you one, fun. because it's on my rib cage. You know how when um, you pet a dog, like, in the wrong direction, and their skin, like, goes like this? <laughs> My skin kept doing that as he was trying to tattoo me. And that one hurt, too. It wasn't nearly as long as my roses. But, oh, man. It's like he had yes. no control. It's just like, mm, and then he moves somewhere else. I'd be like, mm. Yeah, and then he, so got, he got so mad. He was like, stop moving. I was like, I can't. I, I couldn't. <laughs> this one is completely different from the last few we've talked about. This one I got in Hawaii. It is the Japanese symbol for dream. Dream on, dream. <laughs> it doesn't have any big philosophical meanings or anything. The story behind it is that I think it was my senior year in high school because I had to have been 18. And I was on vacation with my parents and my best friend, and we were in Hawaii. My best friend's brother was stationed in the military on a different island in Hawaii, and so we, my friend and I, went and spent some time with her brother for a few nights really? on another island. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. My friend and I had talked about going to get, like, matching friend tattoos while we were in Hawaii um, without telling our parents. I can't believe yeah. you did that. Actually, yeah, I can't. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I totally can. <laughs> um... So we, had, we went to the tattoo parlor and we were trying to find something that we were going to get and she ended up being too nervous. I think she was just afraid that her parents were going to be really mad at her, which they probably would have been. But I went ahead and got one. So I got the Japanese symbol for dream. That's kind of it for that. I didn't know that you guys went and saw her brother. And... Yeah. I love when I learn new things about you. Yeah. It's 
She's been together for a long time, so there's a lot that isn't new. Why don't you talk about one of yours? Oh, I'm going after that Your one. other one. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I've talked a lot. <laughs> oh, you have. You have a lot of tattoos. But they're all good. Okay, go ahead. So the last one I have is on my left forearm. It is I am enough. So this one, again, it kind of goes along the same lines as the other one as to why I got it. But I had started writing probably about three, oh man, three, three and a half, four. Oh, yeah, it's four. 23. Almost four years ago. Wow. Wow. Ch -ch -ch Changes. So we're going to make this like long and short, right? So about four years ago, I went to treatment for having such severe anxiety and depression and trying to actually learn to manage it rather than just constantly taking, having, medicine. taking medication. Yeah. And it also kind of opened my eyes to this, and this actually was with the other one too, but the stereotype around mental illness oh, and yeah. that it was not to be talked about. It and instead it was just, and... we're going to give you a pill and you need to feel better. Just deal with it. Yeah, and just, just deal with it. And so I went to a treatment, it was very much like a holistic based center. Yeah. That's where we've talked about me taking up yoga, that's where I learned about mm -hmm. yoga. Um, but I also learned something else that I talked about in, what is it, the morning, morning my routine. morning routine video. Yeah. And doing affirmations. Every single morning I writing them down. had started writing affirmations, like an entire like, page yeah. of affirmations. Now I don't do quite as many. And at first I thought it was really, really silly. But after doing it for, I don't know, it was probably a few months, it really noticed it started to help. But the one thing that I continued to struggle with, and again, we talked about this other one, was the feeling of, I am enough. I constantly felt like I wasn't enough. I wasn't able to do things as well as other people. I wasn't finding my place in society where I felt like I could really make it. I wasn't enough in our relationship. I just, no matter what it was, like, I did not feel like I was enough. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that that was the affirmation I needed to see every day. And, and anytime you're struggling, you can look down and it's just right there. Uh -huh. And I don't have to think about it. Like, it's across my entire forearm. So I, <laughs> I see it. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. You are. You are enough. It's a constant reminder. Anyway. And, Yes, for sure, for sure. Like, I absolutely love both of my tattoos because of that. They are reminders of where I've been, but also, mm -hmm. like... Where you're going. Where, yes, yeah. And how far you've come. Mm-hmm. Like, 100%. So far. Thank you. 100%. Like, so, so far. And both of them took me... That one didn't take me quite as long. I loved it. No. But the first one took me a really long time, like, years and years of me thinking about having something on my body and, like, this is going to be permanent. What? I don't know if you've noticed, but like with the whole pregnancy thing, like, I'm like, I can't take that off. I can't do it. Yeah. So it was like the same kind of thing with having a tattoo for me, but they, they, they both mean along the same kind of lines. And there's, I, there's a couple other things that I would like to get that are kind of that same symbol of growth. And, hope and, and, and yeah, even if you're struggling now, like it'll get better. Even if you're struggling for years, it gets better. I mean, I'm what? I just turned in December. I turned 33. Gosh, she's an old lady. <laughs> she's only nine months older than me. She's an old lady, though. Stop. You're an old lady, too. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're old. I'm a spring chicken. Yeah, spring chicken. <laughs> yeah. You waddling around spring chicken. <laughs> So it's really, it's progress. I think she's this is the second video, third or second video she's tried to climb up on. She has a lot of anxiety too. Yeah, she's my dog. <laughs> okay. She is me in dog form. Back to our tattoos. I have two more to talk about. And then I'm, I'm done, I promise. <laughs> the next one I'm going to talk about is I have a cross on my lower back. Yes, it's a tramp stamp. Whoops. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> so I grew up in a pretty religious ceremony. We went to church every Sunday. I went to VBS every summer. We spent a lot of time there. You went to where? VBS. Vacation Bible School. Like a summer camp. Mm. So, like, my faith is always important to me growing up, and so I thought it was a great idea to get across. And I went without my parents' knowledge, so I thought 
me getting across would be less, I would be in less trouble with them if I got across. Because got across. Because I got it when they were out of town and my grandparents were babysitting me. So that's babysitting when I was 18. But today, like, I still believe in a lot of the things that I was taught I was young. I believe that, you know, love, you need to love everybody. And <sighs> I, I think that love is, you know, the strongest force on the planet. And if we just all spent some more time loving each other, that the world would be a happier place. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that I take from Like what you take from, religion. like, religious mm -hmm. beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I still hold on to some of those beliefs. Maybe not all of them, but... Yeah, and to, each, to each their own. For sure. Huh? Okay. To each their own, right? Like that's... Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. My last one is actually really meaningful, too. My last... Oh, I love The last, last one. one that I'm going to talk about was the very first tattoo I ever got. The one that I mentioned in the beginning. I went to the tattoo parlor. As soon as I turned 18, my mom heard to talk me out of it, but she was actually with me for this one. She was like, why don't you just get, like, a butterfly or something? And I was like, no. So it's a phoenix. This is a good one. The so, meaning of this one's really good. Yeah, I think so too. A lot of people have phoenix tattoos. They're actually really common, which I didn't know at the time. No, I didn't know. But I did a ton of research trying to figure out what I wanted to get, and I wanted it to be really meaningful. So a phoenix rises from their own ashes. They die, and then they rise from their own ashes. So my interpretation of that is you're going through something hard, you feel like you're beaten down, you're going to come back bitter, bigger and better than ever. You just have to convince yourself that you're going to do that. You sure did. So I also struggled a lot with anxiety and depression as a teenager. Um, through a lot of my high school years, I did. So that was big important for me when I turned 18 to put this on my body. And it obviously is very old and <laughs> it's never been touched up. And I've talked about getting it like redone and making it bigger and better many, many times. Maybe that'll be Maybe. in our future. Yeah. But let's have a baby first. So yeah, that one, I think most of them, aside from the Japanese symbol, which is just a fun memory to have, I think. They all have really deep meaning. Yeah, and they're all kind of at transitional turning points. I think that's super common. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I think that's super common for, for sure. Tattoos, that's, you know, that's, that's how my brothers are, too. And that's, that's what mine are, too. Like, they're really yeah. big times in life. I mean, yeah. all two of mine, you know. <laughs> Do you guys have any, like, inspirational quotes or sentences or symbols on you? Let us know. Yeah, we would love to hear what your tattoos are, kind of about them, and if anyone shares a similar story to any of theirs, yeah. you know, that's, like we said, like, it's huge for tattoos to have symbolic meaning to periods in your life. Yeah, for sure. And to be constant reminders of whatever was going on, or mm -hmm. whatever is to come, so let us know. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you aren't already subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. The weirdo comes out. <laughs> <laughs> she is pretty weird. I like her though. Sometimes. <laughs> All the time. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye.